Okay, this next session is about the conservation of momentum. Uh, this is a law that we talked about in year 10, but we need to, as ever with year 12 and 13, take it apart a little bit more. So we need to remind ourselves of Newton's third law and what we mean by a closed system. We're going to talk about what actually is this law of conservation of momentum, and then we need to define something quite important called elastic and inelastic collisions. Okay, what was Newton's third law? Well, this was it. When two objects interact, they exert equal and opposite forces on each other. That's one way of saying it. Another way of saying it is to every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force, or quite a classic way, uh, which most physics teachers end up saying at some point, is if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal but opposite force on object A. Now, when you think through this, you might think, but hang on, if the forces are equal and opposite, then and they why don't they just cancel each other out? Why doesn't everything just not bother moving? But you need to really read Newton's third law and realise that if object A is exerting a force on object B, then B is exerting an equal but opposite force, yeah, but it's on object A. So one of the forces on object B and one of the forces is on object A. So they're on different objects. So a and B have got a different force on, so they will go off and move and do whatever that force causes them to do. They won't just cancel out because they're not on the same object. That's quite important for this idea of the conservation of momentum. Uh, free body diagrams can be confusing, but you might have done some of these in lessons, but free body diagrams show the forces on an object. So this is a free body diagram, a very simple one of just a person standing on the earth. And if you're standing on the Earth's surface and you are not moving, then there is zero resultant force because you're not moving. So the, the gravitational fullers f force of the Earth downwards must be equal to the contact force of the Earth on you, pushing you upwards. Are they a Newton's third pair? Uh, no. The biggest reason they're not a Newton's third pair is, well, OK, we can say they're equal in size, so that might you say yes. Uh, but this is the biggest reason they are acting they're, they're acting on the same object those two forces I've just gone through the contact force and the gravitational force are acting on the person now these cannot be a Newton's third pair because the Newton's third pairs would be acting on two different objects correct Newton's third, third pairs will be something like the contact force of the earth on person and the contact force of the person on the earth or the gravitational pull of the earth on person and the gravitational force of the person on the earth they are your correct Newton's third pairs because they're acting on different objects the, your idea of a Newton's third pair to check it out uh, obviously the forces are equal and opposite but they must be acting on different objects and the force is always of the same type that might help you if you get a little bit stuck so how can we link this to the principle of conservation of momentum if you've ever done this uh, if you ever had an embarrassing moment where you fell in the water by stepping off a boat if you just have a look at the, the pictures at the top of the screen you can see uh, the boat's not moving the person's not moving so in the middle picture they're about to step off the boat and to do that you need to have a contact force between you and the boat and that contact force you want it to propel you forward but possibly what you don't think about is that that contact force is going to propel the boat backwards by your act of pushing on the boat you want to go forwards but the boat because it's on a relatively friction free surface i.e. in water uh, then it's going to go backwards if we apply Newton's second law to this, we have got a force acting, and that force is equal to the change in momentum divided by the time. The force and the time are the same because it's the person's foot causing it. So the force, the magnitude of the force, and the time are the same. Okay, the the force is acting on the boat and the person, so it's on two separate. Uh, two separate things but they are in opposite directions so if you look at the signs the change in momentum of the boat would be in the diagram going off towards the left the change in momentum of the person stepping off would be going off towards the right uh, but because of this they sort of cancel each other out so the momentum before has got to be zero because nothing was afterwards but the momentum afterwards is going to be zero so if
Okay, so a little bit of a, a summary, if you like. If a resultant force acts on an object, its momentum changes. We've seen that with the boat. Momentum changes or is transferred between objects, but total momentum in a closed system does not change. So if you just looked at the momentum of the boat and the person, that's just a closed system, then that the, the momentum there does not change. The momentum before was zero, they weren't moving, but the momentum afterwards was, was also zero because one was positive and one was negative. We looked at both ends of the interaction. If we'd have just looked at the person, we wouldn't have been able to understand that, but because we looked at the person and the boat, so that's the complete interaction, uh, we, we understood it much clearer. Examples are if a falling stone increases momentum, because of the resultant force of gravitational attraction to Earth, you might think, well, hang on, where on Earth is the conservation of momentum here? If I pick up a stone, hold it up and drop it, it accelerates, so it, it momentum changes. Where's the other end of that interaction? Well, you'd have to include the Earth, and you'd have to realise that due to the gravitational pull of the stone, then the Earth would actually move upwards toward the, towards the stone. But this would be an absolutely no way you would be ever be aware of this because you'd have to compare the size of the mass of the earth uh, to the mass of the stone to give you a feel for how much larger one is than the other okay let's look at collisions an elastic collision this is an example of an elastic collision if we imagine two uh, cars or trolleys moving towards each other they're both one kilogram and they're both moving towards each other at 10 meters per second so if we do that they collide and they bounce off each other. Uh, if we've got a, a spring involved, you can see a spring on the one on the left hand side, and they bounce off each other. So we end up afterwards, we've got them moving away from each other at 10 meters per second. So if we look here, what's important to look at is the kinetic energy before, the kinetic energy afterwards, the momentum before, and the momentum afterwards. Maths is dead easy. Kinetic energy before, half mv squared over the one on the left, plus half mv squared of one on the right. Mass is one, velocity is 10. Uh, so that gives me half times 1 times 10 squared, so it's a half of 100, which is 50 for each. So 50 plus 50 is 100. If we look at the momentum before the collision, well, we had a positive momentum. If we take moving to the right to be positive, we had a positive momentum and a negative momentum, both at the same mass and velocity. So the change in momentum, uh, oh, sorry, the, the total momentum before would be 0. Let's have a look at the kinetic energy after the after the collision. Well, they're now moving in the opposite direction, so but we're not fussed about that in energy because we don't say that energy is not a vector. So we just look at the magnitude. So kinetic energy after the collision is 50 plus 50 still, which is 100. And look at momentum after the collision. Well, it's the same, but just the other way around. Uh, the positive has turned to a negative because it's now moving the other way, and so with the uh, negative. So the momentum after the collision is also zero. That is the definition of an elastic collision. An elastic collision is where kinetic energy and momentum are unchanged. They are both conserved. Okay, let's have a look at an inelastic collision. There's no spring between these two cars. So if we get them to collide, uh, they now collide and they just do not move. So you might be thinking, aha, we haven't conserved momentum, momentum here, we've broken the law. Let's think about it and have a look. That's our after picture. Our after picture is zero meters per second. Do the same again, kinetic energy before, kinetic energy afterwards. Kinetic energy before is 100 again, it's 50 and plus 50 for both sides. The momentum before the collision is the, is the same as it was before, it's zero. Why? Because they're moving in opposite directions. Same mass, same mass, same velocity, but in opposite directions. So the momentum before is zero. If we look at the kinetic energy afterwards, well, that is now zero. How do I know they're not moving? Momentum, they're not moving, so we've also got zero momentum. So if you look at what's checked out, well, kinetic energy hasn't been conserved, but momentum, thankfully, has. It's still conserved. It's always conserved, uh, but the kinetic energy is not. A real quick summary of the basics. An elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved, a bouncy ball gets close to a perfectly bouncy ball. Uh, uh, an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved. Some collisions are called totally inelastic, and that means when they stick together, when the objects stick together. If something's partially inelastic, it normally means when they move apart, 
but they don't have the same kinetic energy they have less kinetic energy but notice in the four examples I've got above momentum isn't mentioned because momentum is always conserved whatever you do momentum is conserved but if you think well that doesn't make sense hang on what about certain complicated collisions surely it's not as simple as that well think about the units for momentum you can't convert momentum into anything other than momentum it's not joules it's it's kilogram meters per second energy you can convert so energy can be passed around within a system but momentum can't be converted into anything else so if you've got a crash where damage noise heat etc uh, that means that kinetic energy of objects in collisions may not be conserved